What in the world is going on, people of YouTube? I'm Stephen with Purpose Lens Photo and Media, and today we're talking about the Sony Imaging Edge app. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, basically it is software that goes on your phone and that you can download onto your computer, and that works in conjunction with your camera. Now, uh, there are a bunch of different cameras that are supported, like the Sony ZV-E10, the A6400, the Sony A7C, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, each of these cameras are able to take advantage of certain capabilities that the app offers. The older cameras, if you remember, like the A6500, had something called the Sony Play Memories app. And it basically did the same thing. It allowed you to control your camera, to download pictures from the camera, and do things like that. But it didn't work very well at all. In fact, it was pretty bad. It was really bad. I only got it to work maybe like three or four times. But the new updated version is the Sony Imaging Edge software, which allows you to do the same things like transfer photos. You can control your camera. That means controlling your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed. You can switch from photo to video mode. You can start and stop the video. You can change your focus. You can change the white balance. Essentially, you can completely control the camera with your phone. And one of the craziest things or one of the most ridiculous things that I just found out and ridiculous in a good way is that you can actually turn the ZV-E10 on and off with the phone. Yes, you can actually turn it on and off. So if it's sitting and it's just off, you can actually pick up your phone, open up the app, tap something and the camera will come on and you can start controlling it. I think that's pretty dope. And I tried to think of ways that this would be useful. And I think I may have a few in my head. So before we get to that part, I just want to go over what it is and how it works. So the second part of this is how it works. So your phone or your iPad or your computer, they're going to connect different ways. Now, your mobile devices like iPads and cell phones are going to connect via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So the Bluetooth connection allows you to turn the camera on and off. Now the Wi-Fi is what it actually transfers the picture on, like you can do live view, and it actually sends the photos and videos over Wi-Fi from your camera to your phone. Now you have to go in and set this up. So this isn't automatically just running. You have to go in, pair the phone, Bluetooth, and connect wirelessly your camera to your phone. But once you get all of that set up, it's pretty seamless. Now I will say that I have had still some issues with this app. And although it works pretty good, it still has some bugs and things like that. Now, if you didn't see my last video, you could check that out. I'm gonna put the link to it in the description below. But I did a portrait using flash and I actually used the phone to control the camera. And you could see that I was having issues with lag and things like that. And that is something that the app has struggled with from its inception, as far as I know, till even today even with technology when you're not around anything bluetooth when you're not around anything wi-fi it's not always that great so that's the only gripe i have with this app but that's how it works through bluetooth and through wi-fi the last part of this is is it worth trying to figure out or is it beneficial to you now this depends on how you're going to be using your camera now, let's say you are shooting like a wedding or something like that. Now, typically, if you're going to be doing it yourself, you're going to bring two, three cameras, probably two cameras. You're going to have one on a tripod and then one you're going to have on your gimbal and you're going to be moving around with that one. So the camera that's sitting on the tripod could be the Sony ZV-10. What you can do with the Sony ZV-10 is just set that camera up, get all your settings the way you want, and then just have your phone with you. Once you're ready to go ahead and start recording, you can simply pull your phone out, turn the camera on and start recording just like that. You don't have to worry about having someone else with you to start the camera. I think that's pretty cool. And this kind of kills that argument that I keep hearing from people saying this is the same recycled camera with old parts. Uh, no, it's a little bit different. It can do a lot more. And the fact that you can control it with your phone is crazy so the first thing you want to do to get this thing going is to turn your zve 10 on and hit the menu button once you hit the menu button you want to go over to the third icon at the top which is labeled network once you go to network you're going to see a set of options here but the first thing you want to do is go down to airplane mode you want to turn airplane mode off 
The reason why we want airplane mode off is because if airplane mode is on, this turns off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in the camera. And this is not going to allow you to pair and connect your camera with your phone or whatever your device is. So the first thing you want to do is turn airplane mode off. So once airplane mode is off, you're, you're going to grab your cell phone and you will download the imaging edge app. Once the app is downloaded, you can go back to your camera and you can select smartphone connect. Once you click smartphone connect, then you're going to get these options in here, which is smartphone connection, connection, connect while power off, remote shoot setting and always connect it. So the first thing you want to look at here is smartphone connection and you want to turn that to on. Now, I'm not sure if that was on by default. I can't remember because it's been a minute since I set this camera up, but you want to make sure smartphone connection is on because this is what's going to give your camera the ability to communicate with your cell phone. So then you want to go down to connection and you're going to hit the center button there and it's going to tell you Wi-Fi standby. Now, what you're going to do with your phone is there's a couple ways you can do this. You can go into the Wi-Fi settings of your phone and you can find the SSID, which is the service set identifiers of this camera, which is going to be on your screen there. It's going to tell you exactly what the SSID is. The other option is you can take your camera if you're on an iPhone and just scan the barcode and that will get you connected. Once you're connected, then you're going to be presented with a few options. The option is it's going to have a, your list of cameras. So if you have more than one camera, this is where you're going to see all of the cameras that you have. In my case, I'm going to see more than just one camera. So you're going to select the camera that you want to connect to. In this case, it'll be the ZVE10. So you click start. Now, once you click start, you're going to get this message that says before proceeding, first make settings on your camera to connect and operate a smartphone. Then you'll hit OK. Now, once you hit OK, it will then ask to go ahead and join the network and you'll click join. Now, this takes a second and it may take a little bit longer on your device, depending on what you have and all that kind of stuff. And once you get connected, you're going to get these three options here. It's going to say import in camera images, remote shooting, and then you'll have an option for imported images. Now, if you want to import in camera images, basically what this means is if you have already taken photos on the ZVE 10 that are on the SD card, you can simply click this here and this will open up all of the images and allow you to select each image and download it directly into your phone. I think that's a pretty neat thing to have. This is great if you want to do things like take photos. Let's say you're on vacation or you're at a party. You can instantly take those photos and then upload them to social media and share them however you want. Now, the good thing is if you set your camera up to save the files as raw and JPEG, now you have two copies so you can actually take those raw files, go back and edit them and still share the JPEGs on social media or do whatever you want to do with them. I think that's a great option. Now, the second one is remote shooting. Now, with remote shooting, this is where the power starts to come in with this app, because in this section here, it allows you to control all the aspects of your camera. Again, you have your shutter speed, your ISO, your f-stop, your focus, your white balance, your metering. Uh, your exposure lock, and then you can start and stop your video recording and you can actually activate the shutter on your camera. So this right here is good. So if you have your camera on a tripod and you want to take a group photo, you can get it all your settings perfect right here in the app. I think that's pretty dope. Now, if you back out out of that app or out of that portion of the app, the last part here is the imported images. So if you click on imported images, you'll see all of the images that have been imported onto your phone from your camera. Now, from here, you can do things like if you have an editing software on your phone, you can actually select those photos and edit them. Or again, you could share them through text message or you could share them on social media, however you want to do it. Basically, this is like a bridge that connects your camera to the Internet through your phone. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, once you back out of that, then you can back out again. And this says this ends the camera operation. Now, if you look at the very bottom of your app now, you should see an option that says camera remote power on and off. This to me is one of the coolest parts. So if you tap that, it's going to ask you to set up your Bluetooth. Once you go through the Bluetooth pairing, then you'll be able to actually turn your camera on and off. Now, to go through the Bluetooth pairing, you have to follow the instructions on the screen. It'll tell you exactly what to do. I'm not going to get into detail on that just because that will be a long video. 
but just know that once you pair it, then you have the option to actually turn the camera on and off via your phone. And this is really a great thing. So the question is, is this app and are these features really beneficial to you or is it just a gimmick? Well, it really depends on how you use your camera. If you're a person that is a one man team like me uh, and I do a lot of things on my own, this can be pretty helpful because it can allow you to do things like set up the camera on a tripod, point it at yourself and get your settings exactly the way you want them without having to run back and forth. Now, if you have somebody with you, then maybe it won't be that helpful. Now, one thing I can say that may be helpful to everybody since the ZV-E10 is aimed at vloggers is you can actually take your videos and import them onto your phone and you can do little clips and upload them right to TikTok. Still have all of the quality from the ZV-E10 and bring that right into your phone. So I do think that this camera, the ZV-E10 offers a lot more than the older cameras. Now you can do this on the A6400 as well. Now some of the features are not there like turning the camera on and off, but you can transfer videos and you can transfer photos and you can control the camera. So just know that those features are available. And this app works with a lot of the other Sony cameras. The list goes on and on and on. I'll put the link in the description to where you can see everything that you are able to do with the app. Now, if you want to see more about this, put a comment below and we can go more in depth with the app. But if you haven't seen my video before, like I said before, on me actually using it to take a portrait, then click in the description or click up here. It's the left side. Click here and you can see it. But until next time, I'll highlight y'all later. I'm out. Peace. Mm -hmm.